This is Bucky. He is just, mm, I love him so much. All right, time to do some training. I'm just going to be doing one voiceover. So if there's mess ups, I'm so sorry. Um, so here I'm just asking him to back up by just putting direct pressure on his nose. Um, light pressure. He doesn't need much. Bucky is wonderful and he knows a lot, but he's a little quirky. Um, I love him so much. Um, so here I'm just asking for flexion. He thought I was asking him to move, but I wasn't. So I'm still just getting back into shape as well. And so my body language could have been clearer here to him in that moment. But instead, I just offer a quick correction. When asking for flexion, this is the biggest little thing that can happen is they think that you're asking them to move instead of only just turn their head. Um, so it's just learning or teaching them to that you want them to keep their feet still and just move their head. So I'm just staying where I want to be, just right on his side, holding myself st steady, but moving with him and just keeping that pressure on his nose steady until he keeps his feet still just like that and moves only his nose. But then I didn't release quite quick enough. So then he was like, oh, she's asking for more. And so he moved his feet in anticipation. Here, I'm just rewarding him, taking it slow. I do it again and he did it perfectly. Um, so it's just kind of working with them and communicating with them of what you do want versus what you don't want so you can see here we're getting in a little bit better sync um kind of mostly <laughs> um as we're just getting back into it and he's learning exactly what i'm asking you see he's licking his lips right there which is a good sign that means he's thinking he's learning which is good um he's relaxed his ears are on me um He's a bit of a quirky dude, but I love him. He's just a little twitchy. I Maybe in a different video, I'll describe all their personalities or something, but a little more in depth. So giving him lots of pets. Going back to ask again. There, you see that he just easily, willingly turned his head. So I don't just want him to put his head down. I want him to turn it towards me in that flexion. So here I'm pointing the direction I want him to go. He looked the wrong way as if he was going to go the wrong way. So here I'm just very gently encouraging him. And as soon as he starts moving... I let him stop. Um, here I'm asking him to yield his hindquarters because, I mean, really, he I didn't give him enough space to do it um, properly, completely, and so I just kind of reinforced it a little bit, and we just go nice and slow, nice and chill. Here I'm just giving him a break. We do lots of slow, slowness and breaks for Bucky. So you see, once again, I point. He turned his nose the wrong way, but then he went the correct way, which is awesome. You see, he's licking. Um, so Bucky is a great example of just giving the cue calmly, and quietly with your body and then just kind of giving him the time and space to do it. Um, here I'm moving him out, letting him walk forward. Um, sometimes if they feel stuck or after they've learned something, it's good to just kind of let them walk it out a little bit, walk and think. They are prey creatures and so they want to be able to walk and move. So if they feel stuck, movement can help. Um, so here I'm asking him to back up and he thinks I'm asking him to start lunging, I think is what he was kind of thinking in this moment. So I'm just reinforcing like if he starts going the wrong way, I stop him and step my body back in front of his body so that um, I can reinforce that. I just want him to back up a little bit. I don't want him to move. You can see he's really watching me. He's really interested in me. He keeps licking. He keeps thinking. This was a great training session. You could, did you see his body move slightly back um, at that first little wiggle? So then he tried to move his feet side to side and I just easily reinforced it, doing a little wiggle, backing up into him. He's just turning his head, but I'm keeping his body kind of helping him. We're help. I'm helping him in the communication to try and just get him to just lightly. There he goes. And I stopped very dramatically um, because that was the first moment he really did it well. You can see his ears are on me. He's really looking at me. Um, that was awesome. So I'm just being kind of dramatic in my reward for that because I want him to know that that was correct. Um, he's such a good boy. I wonder how he was treated in previous owners just because some of the way he acts sometimes draft breeds are a little like quirky anyway but I wonder if he was ever treated very harshly because the way he acts I kind of suspect he might have been so again I asked him to back up he did a teeny tiny step back and I rewarded it big time because he just gave me what I wanted we're now moving on to lunging something that he just kind of gets twitchy about once again I wonder if he either he's never ever been lunged before me and if that's the case then he does amazing or he wasn't treated kindly in the lunge, potentially. Um, so I just kind of had him move out and then stop. And now I'm having him move the other way. You can see he kind of thinks about going the wrong way. So I just reinforce that I'm pointing that certain way. Um, I get him in front of that other shoulder and push him out the way that I want him to go. It was chill. It was easy. I didn't have to get super dramatic or anything. Um, kindness is pretty much always giveable in horse training. Um, so here I'm asking him to 
turn those hindquarters and to face me. Um, I just try to make things as much of not a big deal as I can with Bucky. We go at a much slower pace than with others. Not necessarily in like athletically what I ask him to do, but just kind of with my body and with each skill here, I'm giving him lots of pets. As he's approached me, standing with me, and now I'm asking him to go again. And you can also see that he's moved his feet very slowly. He's been kind of like, doop doo doo. So here I'm asking, I am using the rope to ask him to walk a little bit faster. I'm wanting a little bit more impulsion, wanting him to move out. I've shown him what I want him to do, and we've talked about things. So now I'm asking him to trot. I'm asking him to walk out a little bit more. Um, I ask them to trot, and then they're supposed to keep trotting until I tell them to stop. So I'm having to swing the rope pretty heavily, and he doesn't like that. The rope, he's not in danger or anything like that, but he doesn't, he gets a little twitchy. So here he's being respectful and kind to me, but he is a little like, mm, what you doing? What you doing? And I'm just saying, trot, trot. Not like with my words, but with my body and with my motion. So here I get him back walking. I tell him to trot. I start swinging that rope. I'm kissing and clicking, telling him with a lot of different cues that he needs to walk. I keep my arm pointed the way he's going to tell him that I still want him moving. So here he's saying, oh, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I just keep that pressure. I'm off screen, but I'm doing the same thing, moving with him just to get him to trot. And as soon as he trots, that rope stops and I stop because all I want him to do is trot in that circle. Um... He just isn't a fan of the rope swinging, which is fine. Once again, makes me wonder what his previous lives have been like or with previous people here. You see he goes out the right direction, which is good because we've been practicing that. So he's still got it. He's still learning and listening. And I asked for that trot and he started to and then stopped. So I asked for the trot and he trots and he wants to stop. You can see his nose kind of turning towards me, but you can see that there he just trotted out. He didn't like face up with me he didn't back up he just trotted out so I just relaxed um this session for me wasn't about getting good exercise in for the horses it was about seeing where they're at currently in their knowledge hi rogue hi cat um and kind of just getting them started back into shape so I didn't care that he didn't do a ton of lunging I don't need him to do a ton of lunging right now can see he's a little weary he is his body language has changed a bit his ears are still on me he's still paying full attention to me but he's a little like hmm what does this lady want from me here I point my arm out again just to get him to walk he knows what I want you can kind of see that but he's kind of like hmm and I am just reinforcing that he goes the way I point because he kind of at the beginning there that was perfect see this is why you kind of repeat move on repeat move on and whenever you're training you want to have your list of goals pretty short right you don't want to teach them 12 things in one go so this was all review um and I just kind of wanted to see where he's at he did fantastic in comparison to ways he's been before um so now what I'm doing is I pull him up you can see he's still a little twitchy and so I'm going to work on some desensitization which means that I am just going to play around with this rope toss it over him swing it by him to show him that the rope doesn't tell him to move I tell him to move um, I talk about that in the body language video actually with him because he's a good candidate for it so you can see that he's looking around he's looking at me he's still paying attention his legs are squared up I'm just being kind and gentle having fun telling him he's a good boy letting him move at that moment because you know once again they're prey animals and so if their feet feel stuck sometimes they start to panic so it's good to sometimes let them move when they can move and then ask them to stay still when they can you see his head's a little lower here my body's chill um i'm trying to get that rope all the way over him he's a tall he's a tall boy i love him so much um and so tossing that rope over him being nice and calm, taking deep breaths. I'm taking deep breaths as I watch this because I know that's what I'm doing. And here I have him follow me and he does willingly. So he's calming down. He's understanding I'm not trying to hurt him or scare him with the rope. He's licking his lips. We're nice and calm, which is good. Um, so that's a good moment in training. Um, I'm stretching because I'm also out of shape and sore and tired. Um, so we're just giving him space to think and chew. You can see his ears, his head's a little softer. He is stepping on the rope. So I ask him to move his feet nice and gently, get the rope back. In desensitization, all of the horses, when they come to me, they're all older. And so I kind of assume they've had certain levels of desensitization already in their life. Um, and so I do go back over it with every single one of my horses and at different times, different ways. It's always good to introduce new things, to desensitize in new ways. Um, 
And so, but with Bucky, he needs it just more consistently. So does Atlas, actually. And, well, I mean, all of them, for different reasons, might need it here and there. So it's good just to kind of, like, put a saddle on them but not ride them. Or to um, swing the rope around them and not ask much for them that day. I really believe in, like, really short training sessions. and um, But it's different with different breeds, different ages, different disciplines you know everything and so it's really important to just do what your horse needs and to know what your horse needs and stuff like that so here I'm just swinging the rope again you can see he's not really even paying attention to me as much his ears are on me but his head's looking the other way which is a good sign he's not as panicked um so here I'm starting to swing the rope which actually swinging the rope sometimes like this your arms get real tired so it's a great arm workout and you can see he's a lot more calm his body there at the end kind of started to move away but I stopped which is a good good timing there um you kind of have to feel their body because you're trying not to look at them too much because you want it to be nice and chill you see his head kind of goes up he's kind of like mm. he rocked back and then he rocked forward a little shake I looked to make sure what Eden was doing because Eden's more in charge than Bucky is Eden's like head mayor or whatever and so I just was making sure with his actions like how he was acting at that moment that she wasn't coming up and like bothering him and then I would have I would just push her away if he she was and so um, I'm happy with that side. I think I'm done with that side. So then I let him take a step forward. I go back to his other side. Um, I'm just really calm and gentle with all my horses, but with Bucky especially. Um, you just got to give the horses individually what they need. And they all need different things. And, and you know, as training goes on, <laughs> I tried to toss it over him. It didn't work. You don't want them all. Um, so now he's kind of turning in. He wasn't necessarily like looking at me. He was looking past me, which was, I think the horses were running in the pasture is why he was doing that. But if I remember correctly. So you just want to kind of throw that rope all over their body and desensitization. When you really start from ground zero, it's a lot more encompassing. Um, here I'm just kind of reinforcing. So you see there, I was happy with it. So I dropped the rope completely and I dropped my body completely as a big, big, big release. There's so much that goes into horse training and in the voiceovers I want to say, but I never have enough time. And so bye, I'll talk about more things later.